what you are about to get is healthy. It is necessary. We're talking about dialogue amongst humans who have a difference in opinion and can cordially talk about it without calling the other person ill-intended. This is the beauty of argumentation to me, the beauty of human subjects who can do this, that the goal is understanding. It's not to say you're, you're correct, I'm, I'm correct. It's to say, okay, I see where you're coming from. This is where I'm coming from. This is my point. And this is what we have here. We have Monique on the Steve Harvey show stating her claim of why she had grievances with Steve Harvey, Lee Daniels, Oprah Winfrey, Tyler Perry, and other subjects who claimed she was hard to deal with, essentially blackballing her from the entertainment industry. Steve Harvey claims why, I guess, his stance was justified. So let's get into the dialogue. Subscribe to Dane's World, by the way. Mont Baby, he be saying it like I'm a problem. Oh, you, you have been a problem. Well, Steve, I, okay. What was it? Let, 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 let's go. Let's go. You started getting labeled as difficult. Yes. Why do you believe that that happened? And do you see that changing and why? I got labeled as difficult. My husband and I, and my husband is Sydney, who happens to be my manager. We got labeled as difficult because I said one word. And that was no. Now, I said no to some very powerful people. I said no to Oprah Winfrey. I said no to Tyler Perry. I said no to Lee Daniels. And I said no to Lionsgate. And the difficulty came in when people that look like me, like Oprah, Tyler, Lee Daniels, and I got to put my brother Steve on the list. Y'all knew I was not wrong. Each one of you said to me, Monique, you're not wrong. And when I heard you go on the air and you said, my sister and burned too many bridges and there's nothing I can do for her now. Steve, do you know how hurt I was? Okay, so now let's get to her issue. She stated that <clears throat> when she said no, she didn't compromise to whatever she did, a backdrop. It was something about promoting uh, Precious for free. So pretty much going on tour and doing something she didn't want to do for free and she said no to it which gave her the title hard to deal with and she's claiming that these people black faces i'm not saying as far as coon and blackface but these black figures said they agreed privately but then publicly went and said she's she's burned too many bridges and put on a different narrative publicly i think they're saving face because those are the same gatekeepers that blackballed her steve harvey ain't he don't want no parts of that he want to be in good graces with the gatekeepers. He wants to play a more suggestible role. They tell Steve Harvey to jump. He say how high. They tell Monique to jump. She sit down. <laughs> Big difference. But both well intended in my opinion. So that's why I love this discussion. Let's keep it going. Mo, now let me give you this. Because you and I had this conversation. Mm -hmm. I thought you went about it wrong. Mm -hmm. See, I felt that you had done yourself a disservice mm -hmm. by the way you chose to go about it. Tell me how I went I, about it. I was cool <coughs> with, you, with, you, with your deal with uh, Netflix. Mm -hmm. I was cool with you. The two problems that we had, mm -hmm. number one, the boycott of Netflix, yes. we never gave people a point of action. Mm -hmm. Okay, if we're going to boycott, are we going to not get subscriptions? Are we going to turn it off? Or are we going to go down there and get signs? Mm -hmm. The second point, what was coming to me was, this problem that you had in Netflix is rich people problems. Because mm -hmm. they looking at us going, you talking about you didn't get millions. Cool. But when you say... Okay, let me address Steve Harvey's comments. His first problem was it wasn't a means or it wasn't a clear message of how to boycott Netflix. Which I can't agree on. It wasn't a clear message to the public as to what she wanted in regards to boycott Netflix. So the stance could have been more practical so people can practice it essentially but the second thing he's talking rich people problems now essentially it can be categorized that if you ca categorize them as rich but then again you have rich people who are marginalized in amongst those rich people so you're talking about black actors and black actresses who get paid less than white actors and white actresses historically and still today on average so just because we're quote-unquote rich people 
excuse me, we're quote unquote rich people doesn't mean we're not marginalized amongst the other quote unquote rich people. I get paid less because I'm a black woman. You get paid less because you're a black male. Rich people problems or not. And then the other thing I have a problem with Steve Harvey's comments is because he's saying the first thing he said was that he had a problem with the way she went about it. When you're talking about a means of protest and a means of attacking oppressive methods, people are always going to have a problem with it. The Kaepernick situation, most people said they have a problem with how he's doing it. When you're doing something revolutionary and quote-unquote radical, it will be discord in someone's head to be like, okay, you're not following the system. You're doing wrong. But that's what it takes to change a paradigm and a narrative where black actresses and black actors get paid less and they get told to do things that they don't want to do. They become more docile and then they don't have the right to freedom or to creatively express what they want to as artists. So he's telling her to be more suggestible, more malleable. And I disagree, in my opinion. The way you want about it. Mm -hmm. And I want to explain that and I thank you for saying that. Inequality is devastating. And it's extreme. And when people said, Monique, do you think calling a boycott was extreme? you damn right. But isn't inequality extreme? So we've got to get to a place where we're unafraid to say it out loud. Okay. What I was, what My sentiments, unafraid to say it out loud. Speak your peace. Don't be scared of this system. Because if we're all scared, we'll all be suggestible to the system. As opposed to we're all not afraid to speak our piece, then guess what? You have the masses with a big voice now. We're not the minority when it's just Monique and the rest of y'all saying she wrong publicly, but in private telling her she right. I would have loved, what I would have appreciated from my brother was had you picked up the phone before you went on the air and said, Monique, you've burned too many bridges and there's nothing I can do. See, I would have appreciated had my brother called me up and said, baby, Let's talk because you doing that was a part of me being different. Now, before that, though, yes, baby. Okay, she said she had to gripe with him going on air saying she's difficult, and he sideswiped it right there. He said, Before that, acknowledge you did that. Before you say before that. So, Pete, he's kind of sideswiping or justifying why he threw her under the bus. But her main point is, brother, you shouldn't throw me under the bus. We in this same war together. And you throwing me under the bus. You know how it is. With the moment on stage. Oh, yes. See, now that, that, that was right a there. wonderful moment. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, it wasn't. That was one of those. <laughs> See, no, it wasn't. That Richard Pryor whispered in my ear and said, say it. You say it. Richard because Pryor did not I'm gonna tell, tell you, you to say that. Yes, he did. Oh. See, this is the thing. This is the thing about interpreting someone else's language and how they use it. Interpreting interpretations or hermeneutics or interpreting symbols, which is semiotics. Talking about language arts here is when you're talking about communication. That's why understanding to me is so goddamn difficult. You come in with two different frequencies, two different meanings to millions of words, and then you try to relate or understand the next subject she's saying richard Pryor told her not to say not to compromise her voice so she's insinuating that what she said was based on the words of Pryor. he's saying richard Pryor ain't tell you that shit literally richard Pryor didn't tell you nothing with your crazy ass but they're taking the words or the interpretation of whatever richard Pryor said differently in different contexts between different subjects but let's keep it going yes he did yes he did I do not regret, as I said on the Steve Harvey show, I do not regret one moment of that night on that stage. No, no, no. no. In case you don't know, <laughs> Mo told hold Tyler Perry, uh -huh. Oprah Winfrey, Tell him. and Lee Daniels mm. to suck <laughs> her private parts. <clears throat> not my private parts. Well, you said if I had one, yeah. I want them three to suck my private parts. <laughs> it wasn't private parts on stage. So now, then I went, <gasps> I quit breathing. I quit breathing for you. Again, you talk about suggestible characters and you talk about those who are more willed. He was scared for her, but this is another parallel. When someone takes that leap of faith, most people won't do it because they're scared. So, 
She's speaking her free speech as a comedian for one. And the last motherfuckers that need a filter. And he was scared for her exercising her freedom because he's aware of the same forces she's aware of. They just approach it differently. He would never do that. He wants to stay and wiggle around the industry. She wouldn't do that because it compromises her integrity of being honest and truthful, in my opinion. Hermeneutics, baby. What happened to you, Mo, was when you made that statement, the narrative got flipped. It wasn't about Netflix no more. It was Narrative gets flipped in between all subjects. We all interpret words and symbols differently. The narrative will always be flipped. This is why we come together and try to seek the understanding. Feel me? Netflix no more. The tension was all off of that where we needed Netflix. to go. Huh? That was before Netflix. So good. So now when you bring up Netflix, it doesn't get no win, but you done just said this to these three people. And these three people, yes. not because they're powerful, mm -hmm. but because of who they've come. And not because they're powerful, but because of who they've come or become, I think he... But that insinuates power. He, she's, He's implying that she shouldn't have said that to those specific people because of who they've become. She's in. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Why can't I, as an individual of free speech, say what I want? There will be ramifications. Can't knock it. But as a black person in this country, you can't compromise your integrity all day. You'll end up talking like this and being things you never thought you could imagine to be. As I told you, we can't cure darkness with more darkness. I got what we you. can do is cure it with comedy. And what I'm not going to do, Steve... I'm never, ever going to waver from my comedy show on that stage. That's my gift, and that's my freedom. And what happens is when you allow people to start taking your freedom mm. and your gift mm. and making it become what makes them comfortable, mm. we then lose. When you called me with the morning when show... When you compromise your voice, we then lose, regardless of the money gain. I said to you, Steve, I'm this. And y'all know I did nothing wrong. Y'all know my husband did nothing wrong. But none of y'all in real time, in real time, was strong enough to go publicly and say, mm. we can't throw our sister under the bus. Mm. Just move. Listen to me. We fighting two wars here. What he war? changes the subject again. She said, I got thrown under the bus. That's my main gripe. You're not addressing that you threw me under the bus, brother. As a black face, not a black face coon, but a black figure in the industry, the last people I would expect to throw me under the bus is the ones who know we dealing with this same industry that damn near encapsulates us, marginalizes us. So I would at least expect it from you, and then he kind of, he's going to sideswipe it. There's two walls. It's what your issue is, and it's what the perception of the issue is. And the narrative has changed. See, I'm hearing what you're no, saying, baby, and I agree with it when the narrative changes. But if all of y'all said, this is the only issue I have with it, baby. When all of y'all said privately, to include Oprah, all of y'all said privately, we, I've done nothing wrong. Mm. When you tell the truth, you have to deal with the repercussions of the truth. Mm. So, bam, there you have it right there as far as my understanding. She's saying, y'all told me privately I wasn't wrong, but publicly y'all said some different shit. Y'all lied. And he's saying, the truth come with consequences. So to me, what he's saying, in this industry, you got to wiggle around and you can't be truthful all the time. Compromises her integrity, which is why I can see the difference. I'm more aligned with Monique because I'm not going to compromise my integrity. Not for no almighty dollar. Not for no business. Not for no corporation. Not for none of that because... I feel more empowered when I can freedom freely speak my peace with no no subjects around me to bound me from that, limit me from that. Back out here. We can't come out here and do it any kind of way we want to. That's a slave mentality, I have to say. They said, we black out here. We can't come out here and do anything we want to. White folks don't have this mentality, which is why their confidence level subconsciously is always more accessible because we're not told they're not told you're white out here you can't do that we're told subconsciously you're black out here you can't do the same things which practically is not false i agree with what he's saying if we come out here and freely express ourselves we're going to get looked at a certain way but she's trying to change a paradigm in the industry she's trying to change a dogma we should be able to speak freely i should be able to walk around how i want to walk i'm not finna comply there will never be change if I accept the fact that I can't be who I am. 
I think Steve Harvey's more malleable. He's more suggestible. He's going to play the role as much as he can in the industry to succeed in the industry. But the industry itself looks at you as subordinate. Oh, your husband yes. can't be the Sydney that he really is out here. Let me tell you. Not fit that flexing. Let me we got to flex a different way. We out here in a game. This the money game. This ain't the black man's game. This ain't the white man's game. It's this the is money the money game. game. But I, I, we I, in the money game. And you cannot sacrifice game. yourself. The uh, best thing you can do for poor people is not be problem. one of them. Okay, this, this, is, this is where it gets juicy. He says we're in the money game. For one, who created money? Who created capital? Europeans. So the money game essentially has something to do with Europeans. And who else is involved in the money game? Black people. So it is a money game, but it's also a game within a game when you talk about race. Classism and racism, if you look up historically and economically, they seem to be the same. Poor people are usually black and brown. Since capital was created, since resources were extracted to become capital, essentially. And he's saying it's not a race thing, which I have an issue with. This is what the right wing would say when they dismiss race as a factor and say it's a class issue. But if you align race and class together, you look country to country and you see who's not making the money or who's being withheld from making the money, even in his own field, they make less. In every field, black people are paid less. We're looked at as someone who doesn't deserve higher pay. And then he says rich people can't help or you can't help poor people if you one of them. That's like saying poor people are voiceless. I ain't got money. I think I got a voice. If I reach one person, two people, I did my job. I did my piece. I think if every <coughs> person plays their part, it can be an integral, integral part holistically. And everything can manifest from it. Rich people can do their part. Poor people can do their part. And hopefully we create a utopia rather than a dystopia. But his sentiments... Are saying if you get money, you have a better chance of helping the poor, which I don't necessarily agree with, but I agree with as far as resources go. Resources are obtained through capital now, so I agree in that sentiment, but there's more ways to change than just money, and I don't think it's just a money game. And that's 1740 right there. Let's see what Monique has to say. We are in the money game, home. but let me tell you what the game is before the money game. Like before the money game, it's called the integrity game. And we've lost the integrity mm. right about the money. But Mo, and wait mm. a minute. If wait I minute. crumble, if you my crumble. children crumble, my grandchildren crumble, I cannot, for the sake of my integrity, stand up here and let everybody that's counting on me crumble so I can make a statement. There are way Okay, so this is the difference. He's willing to compromise within the system because of his fear of security in my opinion his fear of his family security i have to play my role because i am fearful that if i don't my kids can't eat people around me can't eat which is definitely understandable the system will back you into that corner to where oh shit i gotta get a job i gotta pay rent i have to do this the system will corner you most people are suggestible enough to be cornered but then again why do you have to accept that compromise? You're still compromising your other integrity, which is telling the truth. So he's admitting that he withholds truth and he doesn't say certain shit because he got to get that almighty dollar. We're in the war in a different way. We got more right after this. All right, that's where I'll pause it. It's just, that's the brunt of it, the just, their disagreements and their disputes. Might do a part two because this is very intriguing. Just coming up on 20 minutes, I don't want to give you 45 minutes. My opinion on this, Monique, she doesn't want to compromise her integrity. And part of her integrity is being honest, telling the truth, having no filter. Steve Harvey tells her, if you want to be in this industry, in this game, you have to compromise that aspect for a different aspect, which is stability, security for your family, and you can help the people that you want to help if you have money, which I don't necessarily agree with, but <coughs> a decent point nonetheless. What's your thoughts on this? What's your take? My overall take, one person is just more compliant to the structure, which is Steve, and most people are, 
and this person is a rare anomaly who's resistant to the system though she did get within it maybe within it she was more oblivious or ignorant to what she knows now but now she sees the system for how she sees it and it's a different thing a more of a black sheep in this system than a white sheep <laughs> but that's it it's dame let me know your comments your thoughts your opinions on this video i think it's wicked and deep peace